Okay, so today we're going to talk about continuous random variables and the definition of a continuous probably generated function, a PDF. And we see this in our calculator. For is f of x is a function where the function is always positive or zero on some given interval where if I take the integral from a to b that this area underneath the curve is equal to 1. And so that means if I have some integral from a to b, some function as such, this area here, it must always be positive above the curve, and this area has to equal to 1. That's what a continuous probability generating function is all about. For a continuous PDF, if we consider these, take a moment, read these over, and fill in with mead, modian, mode, median, and mean. Pause it and see what you get. Well, this is mode because it's the maximum. So think about some function where it's gone like this. The maximum will be the mode. The blank is m is the solution for this equation. Well, this is talking about 50%, and so this is the median. And then we're left with the mean is by this calculation here. And it talks about the similarities between continuous and discrete. Well, here's the formulas for both the discrete and the continuous. And so if you look at this, the discrete takes each individual value, multiplies it by x, and multiplies it by the probability and adds them all up. Well, it takes the x is times the function, which is similar to the probability idea, because the area underneath the function adds up to 1, whereas these probabilities add up to 1. And then I add, or I take the integral between these two values, two extremes. And so there's lots of similar similarities here. Also note that for the variance, here's a formula for variance. And if I look at continuous, and it's in my formula booklet, I get x squared times f of x, that area between a and b, minus mu squared. Again, very similar to discrete. And finally, if I want to find, if I have some function, here's a, here's b, and it's a probability generating function. If I want to find the area between c and d, or rather the probability between c and d, I just find the area as shown here. All right, so here's a great big giant long question, which will take some time to go through with all these parts. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have our function, our continuous random variable, as this PDF, and we want to find the value of k. Well, I know that if I take the integral from 0 to 2, and I look at every single interval that is here, 2 minus x dx. This integral has to be 1 because this is the total area and that will help me find k. So if I go k and then from 0 to 2 of 2x squared minus x cubed dx equals 1. Well, I'm going to use my calculator to do this one. y1 is given and so I'm going to go math number 9 from 0 to 2 and I know it is in y1 dx and so that's 4 thirds this is equal to k times 4 thirds which is equal to 1 and so k will then be 3 quarters and so my probability generating function is going to be 3 quarters x 2 minus x squared, which comes from right here. So there's my probability generating function f of x equal to this when it's 0 to 2, and it's 0 otherwise. Okay, so moving along, I want to find mu now. So if I want to find mu, well, in order to find mu, I have this formula for my formula booklet. I want to find the expected value, so I'm going to go 
you, this is B part, is going to equal to, well, from 0 to 2 of x times my probability generating function, 3 quarters x, 2 minus x squared dx. Well, if I simplify it, I'll pull out the 3 quarters. 3 quarters from 0 to 2, and I get 2x squared minus x. Oh, I'm sorry, there should be no squared here. If I look at the equation, the square goes here. Let me try that. Let me do it correctly now. So now if I multiply these all together, I get 2x cubed minus 2x to the fourth dx when I multiply these all out with a three-quarter pulled out. And then I want to just find the integral of that. Well, if I go math number 9, I'm going to go from 0 to 2 of 2x cubed minus x to the fourth. Oh. minus x to the fourth d d x times 0.75 and now I get the mu is equal to 1.2 I could also do this by hand but if I have my calculator I'm just going to go for it and do the best I can with that. Okay, let's continue on. If I want to find, now I want to find the probability that is, I want to find the probability that the rate of variable is less than mu. Well, if I think about area of this scenario, I have some function here. I'm going to go from 0 to 2, and here is 1.2. I want to find this area. It represents the probability. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1.2 of my function is simply written here. It's 3 quarters x times 2 minus x cubed. If I multiply this out, dx. And so if I go up to here, do it in my calculator, I can go back. To, this should be 1.2 and then I'm going to take that value and multiply by 3 quarters times 0.75 and that gives me a value of 0 0.475 is the probability that the random variable is under mu. Okay, continuing along here, finding the mode. Well, Imagine I have this function, right? It's a cubic function. So it's doing something like this. The mode is going to be the top value, which, in other words, is the maximum. And since I know that f of x is equal to 3 quarters x squared 2 minus x, if I want to find the maximum, that's just going to be to find the mode. I take f prime of x, the derivative. And if I simplify this, it's 3 halves x squared minus 3 quarters x cubed. So taking the derivative, I get 3x minus 9 over 4x squared. Set it equal to 0. I can factor out the x or even a 3x. I'm left with x minus 3 quarters. I'm left with 1 minus 3 quarters x equal to 0. Well, x could be 0, which doesn't make sense, or 1 minus 3 quarters x is 0. So I get 3 quarters x is equal to negative 1, so x is equal to 4 over 3rd. So this is the mode. It's where the maximum occurs for that scenario. 
Alright, then if we move on to median. And as you're doing this, try and do them yourself. Set them up and try them yourself. So now if I want the median, the median, well, this function, 3 quarters, x squared, 2 minus x, and I'll rewrite that in a different way. This is my probability function, 2x squared minus x cubed dx. If I'm looking for the median, I don't know what it is, so it's some value m. I start at 0, and when I take this integral, it needs to equal to 0 0.5. And so here's my problem to find the median. If I <coughs> distribute this, and I'm going to change this to a fraction, so I can work with it easier. So I know that from 0 to m of 2x squared minus x cubed dx is equal to um, if I flip the fraction, I get two-thirds. If I then take the integral of this, I get two-thirds x cubed minus x over 4 to the power of 4 from 0 to m it has to be two-thirds. Plug my values in. m cubed minus m to the fourth over 4 minus 0 equals 2 thirds. The easiest way to solve this, well, I can pull out, actually I can pull out a factor of m cubed, so it's 2, th oh no I can't, it doesn't equal 0. So the easiest way for me to do this then is to just go to my calculator, and then turn that one off, and I go 2 divide 3, oh, hold on, 2x uh, power 3, divide 3, put it in my calculator, minus x to the power 4, dividing by 4, <coughs> and then I'll make this to be 2, divide 3. My window I'm going to go from 0 to 3, which is fine because I might, I know this can be a maximum of 2. And then that window will be fine. We'll find where it's set. And I'm going to get m as it graphs. m will equal 0, which is impossible. No, it doesn't equal 0. I'm just making that up. There's two values here. Let's calculate those. So m could be 1.23 to 3 significant figures, or m could also be 2.49. Well, that's impossible, because I know the restrictions on m, the function has to go between 0 and 2. And so there is my median, my calculation for median. Finally, let's go to IQR and then the variance of standard deviation. Well, the IQR I know is a 25th percentile and a 75th percentile and the difference between those two. So in order to do it, I need to find both the first quartile and the second quartile. Well, I'll call P the value of my first quartile. And it's going to be the same calculation as median. It was 2x squared minus x cubed dx, and that has to be equal to 0 0.25. Well, this part I've already done. It's going to be the same calculation as previous, so 2 over 3 p cubed minus p fourth over 4 equal to, well, this is 1 quarter, and that's going to equal to 3 if I divide this over to the other side. So if I take this equation, plug my values in, <coughs> oh, it's not going to be 3, it's going to be 1 third. I'm going to multiply by 4 thirds. 
So then when I do that, uh, I make this one divide three, graph it, find the intersection. I've already done this ahead of time, and I know that this value is going to be 0 0.9126. I do a similar thing for the third quartile, or the upper quartile, except that it's going to be, this part is going to be 3 quarters. And so again, I'm going to go from 0 to Q of 3 quarters. 2x squared minus x cubed dx is equal to, to 3 quarters again. Divide by 3 quarters, divide by 3 quarters, that equals 1. I'm plugging my q, so 2q squared minus q cubed is equal to 1. And again, we change this to 1. Graph it, find the intersection. And again, I've already solved this, and so Q will end up being 1.5139. And so the IQR, and notice I kept four decimal places here. So when I subtract them, it's 1.5139 minus the first quartile. When I subtract them, the final answer, 1.2. Oh, no, wrong value. The final answer, I can answer to three significant figures. So 0 0.601 is the IQR. Finally, the very last one, the variance of standard deviation. Well, if I want to find the variance of standard deviation, if I look at my formula booklet, here is my formula that I will require for here. I'm going to take the integral of f of x. So if I want to find the variance using the formula, oh, the variance of x will be from 0 to 2. Those are my inter intervals for the question of x squared times 3 quarters x squared 2 minus x dx. This is what I must calculate. When I do that, I'm going to just use my calculator. And, oh, I'm not quite done yet. I forgot to add the minus mu squared. Well, mu squared, we just figured out the other slide two slides ago. Mu was... 1.2 is mu. So if I go here, it's going to be 1.2 squared. I throw this into my calculator, I punch out the answer, and I get 0 0.16, and I should have three decimal places, but I didn't write it down this time. I hope that helps.